The Ottoman Empire is one of the most important and influential major empires in history, though it is sometimes overlooked in the West, which may have something to do with the Christianity versus Islam bent of Western historical education. This lack of recognition extends to the empire's elite and unique military units known as the Genissaries. The Genissaries can be discussed in the same breath as other renowned warrior groups, such as the Roman Legion or the Spartans. A highly trained band of slave warriors, akin to the unsullied of Game of Thrones fame, the Genissaries left ample evidence of their tenacity and toughness throughout their nearly half millennium of existence. Beginning in the 14th century, the Genissaries served the Ottoman Sultan directly. Their involvement in the military and politics changed over the centuries, but the Genissaries remained fundamentally important in Ottoman society. They existed for almost 500 years, the Genissaries were around for almost 500 years, getting their start in 1380 CE. Formed by Sultan Murad I, the Genissaries lasted until 1826, when Sultan Mahmud II ended them, during that time, the Genissaries were an essential part of the Ottoman military. The elite troops were distinct from other factions of the Ottoman army, such as the freeborn Sipahis. The Sipahis held land, conducted administrative duties, and took up arms during wartime. They were largely cavalry while the Genissaries were infantry troops. They were slaves who pledged celibacy, the Genissaries were originally a fighting force made up entirely of slaves. These slaves, known as, Kul, were legally the property of the Ottoman Sultan and were permanently bound to whoever held that title. In their first couple centuries of existence, the Genissaries were recruited almost entirely from Christian peasant families within the empire. These groups may have given up their children freely in hopes of giving them a better life, but they were also, from the viewpoint of Islamic authorities, only loyal to the Sultan, the children would be brought back to the capital city, forcibly converted to Islam, and trained extensively for military service. The Genissaries were subject to many strict rules, including an oath of celibacy. The idea that Genissaries would never marry was similarly placed upon them to maintain absolute loyalty to the Sultan. They also served as firefighters in large Ottoman cities, as the ranks of the Genissaries grew, the Ottoman Empire found other roles for the fighting force to fulfill. Genissaries were posted throughout the empire, mostly in military roles, but they took on more municipal duties in the most populated cities, in the biggest Ottoman metropolises, such as Istanbul, Genissaries served as firemen, putting their military training to work by stamping out blazes before they could spread throughout densely packed neighborhoods. Colonels were called soup cooks and wore ladles around their necks, as much as the Genissaries were feared and revered, their masters never wanted to let them forget their place as vassals of the Ottoman Empire. The Genissary equivalent of a colonel was known as Korbasai, which literally translates to soup cook. He carried a ladle with him to signify his position along with a gilded helmet and a white staff, these commanders weren't actually cooking anyone's soup, but the title was meant to connote their life of servitude. There was a certain amount of pride in being Corbusai, however, with men of lower military ranks given demeaning names, and duties, such as water carrier. They created the first military music bands, military bands are an important part of the history of warfare. The Genissary started this tradition and are credited with forming history's first military bands, the Genissary bands helped the troops maintain their unique marching pace, and they included a lot of cymbals, drums, and horns. The bands continued to be a part of the Genissary culture right up until the end of their existence, Genissary music, by way of these bands, had a large influence on the Western world. Their instruments, styles of dress, and musical styles were all found in Europe by the mid-19th century. Their ranks swelled to more than 100,000 members, the very first Genissaries were slaves and prisoners of war who had surrendered to the Ottoman Sultan and his service. This small collection of former enemies swelled over the centuries to include tens of thousands of men, many of whom were more loyal vassals than prisoners of war, at the peak of their power, and long after the strict recruiting traditions had faded, the Genissaries numbered well over 100,000. Not all of these members were fighters, however, as the organization welcomed more and more non-combatants into their ranks as the years went on. They specialized in ranged weaponry, 
the Genissary specialized in ranged weaponry, upgrading their tools of the trade as the centuries wore on. Initially, the Genissaries were trained as bowmen, although they also used javelins. With time, they upgraded to crossbows for greater range and effectiveness, the popularization of gunpowder led to them picking up muskets, and other small arms were adopted from there. By the late 16th century, sources indicate that all of the Genissaries carried muskets. In their final years, the Genissaries failed to upgrade with the times, which partly led to their downfall. They helped capture Constantinople in 1453, Perhaps the most famous military victory in the history of the Ottoman Empire is the Ottomans' capture of Constantinople in 1453. This took place less than 100 years after the formation of the Genissaries. The battle saw the Ottomans take the capital city of the Byzantine Empire and change its name to Istanbul. Istanbul, long the target of Ottoman sultans, became the focal point of the Ottoman Empire. The Genissaries played a major role in the capture of Constantinople, making up a good percentage of the attacking army and bursting into the city wherever breaches were found. The fall of Constantinople helped spread the legend of the Genissaries early on in their history. Membership became more general and less slave-oriented over time, in their early days, the Genissaries were subject to a strict set of rules and regulations, including celibacy. These rules were tied to the membership of the Genissary Corps itself. With the Genissary's ranks made up of enslaved men and prisoners of war, the rules were put in place to maintain control and ensure loyalty, the recruitment of Genissaries was also supposed to be limited solely to captured and converted Christian children, but, over time, necessity caused the Ottomans to slacken on all of the Genissary rules. Not only did this mean Genissaries could have children of their own, but it also changed the dynamic of the core entirely, eventually, the need for greater numbers caused the membership standards to weaken even more, with any Muslim citizen welcome to join up, freeborn or not. Many Muslims hoped to have their children join the elite core so they could rise up the ranks. They became heavily involved in politics as the centuries wore on, the Genissary spent much of their history as loyal servants to the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, but their role changed over time. As the centuries passed, the Genissaries gained more and more political influence, using social and economic unrest to seize greater power, the Genissaries started to gain a reputation for fomenting rebellion on their own. They established local connections, opting to resist the Sultan rather than protect him. The Genissaries revolted in 1553, deposed and killed Sultan Osman II, died in 1622, and continued to scheme and rebel through subsequent decades. Because their activity in politics coincided with a decrease in the effectiveness of the Genissaries, they were blamed for military defeats. Patrona Halil, an illiterate Genissary, led a revolt against the Sultan in the Tulip era, one of the greatest periods of social unrest in the history of the Ottoman Empire was later termed the Tulip era. Roughly spanning the 1720s, the Tulip era saw European ideas challenging the traditional Muslim ways of the empire. The government at the time, led by Sultan Ahmed III, was weak and unstable. Coinciding with a sluggish economy, this made for a tense situation, the Genissary seized this opportunity to start a popular revolt and overthrow the Sultan, ousting him and replacing him with one more to their liking. Patrona Halil, a non-combatant and illiterate member of the Genissaries, led the uprising, Halil was a native-born Albanian whose actions essentially brought the Tulip era to an end. After he and a mob of followers attacked members of the Ottoman elite, a campaign of repression was initiated by Sultan Mahmud I in 1730. In the 18th century, they basically became their own political party, the Ottoman Empire attempted to modernize the Genissary order in the 1730s, but the group proved resistant to change. The Genissaries instead forced their way into greater military responsibility, gaining naval capabilities that they often mismanaged, as in the Russo-Ottoman battles in 1770, the Ottomans then hoped to phase the Genissaries out by replacing them with a series of units literally called the New Order. The Genissaries wielded their mighty military and financial power, which included many strong alliances, and kept their influence intact, the Genissaries were now more of an equal political entity to the Sultan than a servile force. 
From the perspective of the government officials, however, the Genissaries wanted complete control. In the words of one European observer, the Genissaries, chiefly exercise, d, their power with a view to filling their purses. They led a revolt over new uniforms in 1807, the Genissaries led many uprisings against various Ottoman sultans, but one of the most notable occurred in 1807. Infuriated by orders to wear new European-style uniforms, the Genissaries fomented a revolt, they allied with auxiliary troops called Yamaks, successfully deposed Sultan Selim III, and killed his brief successor, Mustafa IV, R. 1807-1808. Following this period of unrest, Mahmud II became Sultan in 1808. The Genissaries got their way when it came to fashion, but this incident put them further at odds with the Ottoman government. This contributed to their eventual undoing. Sultan Mahmud II carried out a plan to kill all Genissaries in 1826, when Mahmud II took power in 1808, he had a serious anti-Genissary agenda. With the auspicious incident, Mahmud II formally abolished the Genissaries in June 1826. In the months leading up to the auspicious incident, Mahmud II had chipped away at the ranks of the Genissaries, even shifting many members to new military units. The Genissaries responded by leading a mutiny in Istanbul on June 15, which, in turn, resulted in the Sultan bombing their barracks, the citizens of Istanbul then took up arms against the Genissaries, and somewhere between 6,000 and 10,000 members perished. Those who survived fled, were exiled, or were later killed, two days later, the Genissaries were dissolved.